Over the next four weeks or so, I'm teaching a course. So from now on, I'm sort of tied up, as it were. However, I have done some uh, videos which I've prepared and they're ready to go. So this one is a quick look at a Plessy meter and uh, the STC, which I have been working on for quite some time. This is the yellow and brown one, which the transformer smoked after about 10, 15 minutes of operating perfectly. Next week, I have, I think it's a, a Philips from Sweden. So, uh, yep. And in the following week, I'll have uh, Grundig finished. So there's quite a bit to come and look forward to. So let's get straight into it because I'm just far too busy at the moment to do long introductions. Um, we'll catch you later. Bye. I bought this distortion meter at a recent HRSA meeting and uh, I thought it was quite interesting looking but on reflection maybe not. Uh, it's made by Plessy um, probably in the late 70s early 80s. There's a um, calibration date of 82 on here so it's probably three or four years after its purchase or put into service. It has um, a board speed up to 100, so that dates it very clearly. And has uh, element space, so marking all, all and spaces space. Uh, this is the reset time, short, long and infinity. Has a manual reset button and the input down here is single current series, single current shunt and double current shunt. However, when I opened it up, the batteries had well and truly um, carked it, as you can probably see. Uh, this one, well, this one has uh, started to burst at the bottom, and the um, terminal has come off the top and it's sort of bursting out. This one is even worse on the bottom, it's really bad. So typical of Duraleak, these were made in America, made in the good old USA. It's ruined the uh, foam, not that that's a big issue, I can rebuild that. These terminals will have to be rebuilt. This one is particularly badly corroded. And um, yeah, I can just get um, 9 volt battery terminals, they're really cheap, but it's still annoying. Um, now it's connected up to my bench supply, or one of them, and uh, 34 volts, this bench supply goes to 42 volts, and uh, while it works, you can see the needle has moved over here. When you put it on to read, the needle is uh, really pinging right down below zero. So I'm not quite sure what it's actually supposed to do. I suspect it was for telephones or communications testing of cables. So none of these buttons seem to do anything. The 
Yeah. Um, I was sort of hoping it might be able to read distortion in audio circuits, but apparently not. And um, yeah, I can't find anything on the internet for uh, peak distortion meter PDM 10. Uh, it's just one of those rare products. It's got a low serial number of 1204. Um, this is the Navy, the Royal Australian Navy. Um, it's actually, uh, sorry, 1264 PDM 10. And then this, um, some sort of serial number up the top there or model number. Yes, yeah, so I don't know quite what to do with it. Thought it looked interesting, but um, I'll just turn the power off. As you can see inside, this is where the batteries uh, go. And these traces are a little bit uh, Damage. This one looks like it's rusty. Although that just might be off of the foam. Uh, this is all handwritten in there. Uh, it's got some very interesting transistors in it by the looks of it. Nice looking ones. So these three and uh, I think that's, no, that's a capacitor. That is a capacitor down there. Uh, all the resistors look um, beautiful and they're all 5% uh, as they are all even less because they've got the uh, gold band on them. I don't know what this capacitor was or is. Uh, the numbering has been rubbed off. It's down the side there and it's... Um, yeah, missing, missing its specs, just like this piece up here. The, I might be able to find out from this code here. But, yeah, and then down here it's just got a couple of trim pots for calibration. So, I, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to do with this. It's probably um, useless. I have found another um, unit a bit more modern. It goes up to three or six hundred board. Um, and I'll now I've just um, done quite a bit of extensive searching and I've come across this particular meter. It's not the meter that I have, but it's another one. It looks a little bit newer. Um, it looks like it operates on video. This is what this particular one looks like. So this is the STC. This is the replacement chassis which I've got off of a friend in the club and it came with this particular case as you can see it is quite well ventilated And it's got plenty of burn marks on it. But the big problem is uh, this area here, which will be very difficult to fix. It's also got a crack through there. This is uh, welded on. So you can see the welds down there, the plastic welds. So this grill 
will be quite difficult to replace. The outer case, this red part, is marginal whether it can be fixed or not. It probably can be, but it's a lot of work. So, and this one is missing its front piece there. So this is probably not worth repairing, unfortunately. This is a slightly lighter one. It has the heat shield in it for what it's worth. It's just a piece of, actually, no, it doesn't. This is just a piece of tinfoil. So, oh, that might be factory. They might have done something like that because they So, I'll turn on the chassis. It's on about 225 volts, 230 volts. So the aerial is connected. see and I initially thought it was um, valve sockets last night but it's not it's actually sounds more like silver mica disease so this is 3BA Former three, yeah. The, the former three BA, and it definitely has silver market disease. So I'll have to work on that. does sort of settle down as it warms up but yeah so that's what silver mica disease sounds like just popping noises and crackles and, and all that sort of thing it probably needs good alignment too um, I can see that the uh, slug on this one is way down inside and this one is almost popping out so I'll need to give it a good alignment just cleaning up around here and I'm looking at these three STC Bantams from the 1950s um, and very strange this one on the top uh, this is the original case that I got and up at the barbecue uh, Christmas time and this one is suffering very badly from uh, silver mica disease so when I turned it on after fixing it it worked for about 10 minutes and then the smoke came out of the transformer as I've said so John gave me another one which is this case but this chassis notice the uh, black dial pointer on this this is a later series so they did the first run of them and they modified it somehow or another uh, mainly by putting a heat shield in the top of them that didn't save this one um, and yeah so these two chassis have been swapped this is the dead chassis in this one and this one doesn't have any dial glass either uh, but 
Then on Saturday, I picked up this one for about three dollars or something like that at our uh, meeting. After the meetings, we have a mini auction uh, where you can pick up um, junk and um, people's excess wares and things like that. So I jumped at this one and no one else picked it, of course. So that's why I got it for three dollars. So that, this was pretty good and so I'll just show you the the tops of them I can get that to go yep so this one has uh, this mark here and a couple of marks around here as you've seen before This one has uh, quite extensive damage here and there as we've seen before and this one uh, more than I, no 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 I don't think this one's repairable because it's got the damage to the front of it hasn't it and it's got all sorts of cracks and no um, dial glass but that isn't a problem and this one where uh, the, the damage isn't too expen extensive expensive extensive Ugh, yuck this is pretty disgusting also all of these radios uh, were pretty bad, They're covered in grease and oil and things like that. But this one, you can see where the heat from the valves has got to it. And yes, yeah, it's burnt through. I think this one is an earlier one. So there's cracks there as well. So this is cracked right across there down to there but this one is repairable it maybe chop this bit out here put a piece of aluminium underneath it right across and then use filler or something like that to flatten it out it'll have to be maybe cut across there or something like that make a proper square cut in it um, because this is quite warped over here you can see that the cracks go right down to here and then down and this corner is also damaged but I've repaired uh, a number of cases with corner damage like this and it's just a matter of um, putting fiberglass glass or something like that around it to support the filler. This one also works surprisingly and it's got signs of uh, silver mica disease creeping in so this will need uh, extensive work so um, I've just written on it recapped the works so mm, as you can see it's quite disgusting inside it, at one stage it was painted black inside probably because of this uh, white case so these um, yeah but it's um, better than I expected for three dollars and as I say it works but the silver mica disease is coming in and it's uh, quite off of um, well it, it's aligned the tracking's good on it but the stations are very very weak uh, it didn't come with this valve which is a 6B6 uh, I've had to replace this one which I can't remember off the top of my head uh, to get it working but uh, yeah so maybe later in the year when the weather warms up a bit 
and I can actually uh, do some painting and filling uh, without it just sort of sitting in the in the cold um, taking days and days and days to cure I'll be able to uh, do something with this one uh, the dial string is actually good on it too it's my head creeping in no um, yeah so good find